Well, hello there. Thank you for tuning in. For today, I am going to engage these two fans in holy matrimony. In a process I call marrying fans, it's when I permanently wire two fans together to work as one instead of needing to use splitters or hubs or, you know, that kind of jazz to uh, get them to work together. Especially in a situation where you only need it to be two fans and, it, you know, it starts to get complicated. Now, I'm not even sure if I can marry these fans because they don't have access to the wires underneath, but you know, there is a way to take them apart and that's what I'm gonna try to do. These fans in particular are some up here fans that a buddy got from Amazon and then ended up giving to me. And they are very good fans. They're the only two I have that are PWM. The rest of them I, I have are DC for whatever reason, but they have quiet motors and that's what's important to me. You know, when you throttle them right down, you don't hear motor noise like I've got some Corsair fans that do that and it, it's annoying. Like, no, don't have As far as performance and static pressure, well, I don't know. They work, I have them on a radiator and that's just the thing. I use the two together in a push-pull configuration on the front radiator of my main rig. i am actually been filming redoing a, a, a water change on it and changing the reservoir. That video might be up by now. And before I put it back together, I wanna sort on this. As it stands right now, there's this fan hub that that comes with, and you know, it has an input for the PWM and the addressable RGB, these fans are addressable RGB, that cable's off camera right now, and then you have like seven ports. So I'm using this to connect two fans, and actually, since I have more of these fans, I wanna use this in another build that doesn't have our addressable RGB, so I can have a little bit of flare in there, because this is actually also a lighting controller, you can uh, put a push button right into there and then flick through different modes. Now, one thing other than the fact that it's excessive for two fans, I don't like about it is I can't turn the fans off. Now, when I tune up my systems, I tune them up in a way where they are thermally tuned. Now, hardware today is so power efficient, you don't need all those fans ripping and running all the time. It's just burning your fans and collecting dust for nothing. In fact, I can have just a couple fans on one 120 mil rad running dead slow, cool my entire computer when I'm just surfing Facebook. It's not until I start getting into gaming or editing and my water temperature increases that I actually have the fans kick in. Now, this guy, you know, it takes a PWM signal from the motherboard header, but it feeds DC for the fans directly from this Molex. These fans don't support a PWM turn off function. Some fans do, these ones don't. So the way the motherboard turns the fans off is by cutting power. But since it's getting power somewhere else, it can't do that. And I want to be able to turn these fans off. So one easy way is to modify this thing, taking power from the fan header instead of the DC. Now obviously they did this so you can run seven fans and have enough current, but I don't need that. So I'm gonna try to marry them. So first we gotta pick a fan and then we gotta peel back its sticker. There's a chance you might not be able to get this sticker back on nice again, so make sure you put this one in a position where, you know, it can afford to look a little bit ugly on its hind side. Nine times out of 10, you see a little cap in there. And typically that cap is rubber and you should be able to pop it out, but yeah, it's hidden in there pretty good. Oh, they might have fused this popper into place. Because often you can pop out that cap and then like pop the fan out of its bearings. Jeez, I almost want to go and get one of the spare fans that I have that's not PWM and see if I can get it apart. Well, how the heck did they get this together then, bud? All right, here's one of the spare fans that I have that's not PWM. And I have like four of these, so I can maybe afford to, uh, I don't wanna destroy it, but I wanna see if it's just some sort of force fit where if I give it a good firm press, it'll pop out. Maybe they snap into place somehow and then they lock in there and you're never getting them out again. They do funny things like that in manufacturing, but I've typically never seen it on a fan. No, that's definitely in there. Okay, so this is slightly controversial then. I'm not uh, nipped yet though, there are ways around this. Either way, I don't want to risk damaging this fan, so I'm gonna to have to take a different approach. <laughs> Will this stick back on her now? Not that we need it, it's there's nothing there. So if that's no go, then we have to resort to some external splicing. Now these connectors appear to be molded, so that's out. 
These aren't though. So I can easily mod these together. This I know for sure. You know what I just noticed? These have screws. This assembly comes apart. I don't know what that does for taking it apart, but hmm. Okay, so sure enough, quite on a hunch, I went and I drilled a hole into one of the spare fans and I'm seeing how this mechanism works. So in there, that's, yeah, the, the little retention mechanism is kind of fixed into place in such a way that you, they just kind of take this assembly, pop it in, and then they don't expect it to come back out again. However, it does seem you can pop that pupper right out. So this means that with just the right amount of gentle force, since I know I can't really damage it, I just have to overcome that retention mechanism. There we go. I got the fan assembly apart. So now the challenge is to get this PCB assembly off so that I can get to the back of it. These guys, they just kind of press fit on there onto the, the plastic shaft. And I have successfully removed them before. It is delicate work, however, because you can snap that motor assembly and then it's done, bud. But what can press on can definitely press off. I wish I had another one of these mini. All right, so gently. Now, if I warm stuff up, heat causes expansion, cold causes contraction. If we shrink things, putting it in the freezer maybe. Hopefully I didn't ruin all the nice grease that was in there. Man, I really want to get this off, but I don't want to break that. I've successfully done this before, by the way, since you're asking. Sometimes if you can turn it, kind of break it loose. That's where it gets tricky. Ugh. I'm going to damage those wires. Uh, maybe heat will work. I'm trying not to melt it. Kind of like removing a bolt, right? Maybe if it softens things up just enough. Come on, buddy, you know you want to. It's made the plastic underneath more flexible. You can't see it 3D, but man, how did I do this last time I did this? Okay, we got some rotation. Rotation to break it loose. Now let's see if we can ease it upwards. Problem is we need a proper puller. We need to keep that thing pressed down. I'm gonna need more, um, more hands once again. Maybe this'll do. And I can't see what I'm doing here now, so. Am I making any progress here whatsoever, bud? Hmm. <laughs> Let us release. We're getting it to turn. Okay. This might be the method we need here. Turn. 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 Oh. Oh. I think I just broke it. Um, I've uh, bent things out of the way here. That's no good. So that metal, it's not as strong as we need it to be. Hopefully we didn't break any of those little wires. We might still be able to bend that metal back into place. <laughs> Fun. Got it to turn, but not pull out. Oh, you're incorrigible, bud. At the risk of getting destructive, I decided to call in a consultant. You know, I, you know, originally intended this to be a video about marrying fans, but it looks like I am going to kill off one of the spouses and they will be as alone as I am. Yeah. Needless to say, this is turning into a very forced relationship. And I should see to make sure uh, this still works because clearly we have achieved Edison levels of success here in ways that we have found ways that it does not work. Ways, ways. Yes, I'm aware that I said ways too many times. Okay, fan still works well though. That's good. Oh, somewhere in my loosening, I have managed to pull the entire frigging bearing assembly out of it. Ha 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 ha, the plot thickens, hey buds. I guess I should stop torturing this thing or am I gonna be notorious? Get back into shape, bud, get back into shape. Now after some rotations, can we pull on it now yet? Oh, it's moved, it's come up a bit. 
Good, it's off and it didn't actually break anything. Okay, so this is definitely fun. I've done this before, but it was easier. This particular model of fan is a nuisance. It is much more simplified when you just have that nice little, they have a notch that you can get in there and just take it out. Confident I'll be able to put this back together, especially now that I have it out of the hub, I can kind of bend things that I have warped like that guy back into place. All right, so now we have to determine aspects of distance here. I guess we'll make this the front fan or whatever, and they're gonna go roughly that far apart, and this will come around here. I'm not gonna take this one apart to change the wires. I'm just gonna cut these guys. Then I'll have little pigtails I can add to other things later. About this much should be roughly good. Now, these labels, yes, they do. We're committed now, bud. She is cut. Wow, some of the more delicate aspect of work because now we have to piggyback these connections. First, we have to determine what's what here. And we need to strip back these tiny, tiny little wires. It's been a eventful day. My hands are all mashed up. Stripping down these wires is always a daunting task unless you can just kind of... Oh yeah, okay, we're there. Good old fingernail strip. That works sometimes. This is part of what I call actually hardcore computer modding. When you bust out a soldering iron and start, you know, custom cut those cables together, you're going a little bit above and beyond what you can do just, you know, paying to win with cable mods and stuff. You know, not that I want to diss on any of those companies, but i rather save the 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 dollars and spend it on more hardware. So we, we gotta try to tack these together now without it coming completely apart. It looks like it will be a successful process. Successful even more if I use some tweezies. Now, the wires have labels so we can see what's what, just like that. Now we do the same thing with the fan PWM assembly. Give them a tinning. See, one of the wires has this gray stripe on it. Not sure if it's showing up. And then this has a gray stripe. And that gives you a very good idea of what is what here. All right. Now they're all connected together. We got to see if we can put this arshin back together again. Oh, there's tools everywhere. It's got more involved than I expected. So now uh, this will go through here and then we kind of have to make sure we route the wires correctly and then press fit it back into place. And there's adequate enough press fitting that that goes down there nice. We have like a bunch of wires coming out here now. So that's gonna get a bit confusing uh, popping her all back in there, which is one of the next steps we need to do. Mm -hmm. This uh, looks like I'm gonna be breaking plastic here today, bud. Not that I haven't already, kind of, almost. Um, yeah, tight fit here, kind of. Not sure how much more we're going to be able to get together there. But close enough. Uh, now we have to tend to this whole very much unhappy uh, bearing assembly. So we're going to have to maybe try and get this plastic piece off, which is going to go flying. So put the hand over top. Yeah, there it goes. But not really. It's, it's right there. It's safe. It's safe. Just pull that bearing out. It's a good thing I have some machining and mechanical skills. I understand the concept of pressing and pulling and assembling. Except now I got grease in my fingers, need to put the wipe down. All right, I'll use this uh, this bit here to press on that. <laughs> I'm gonna need some persuasion. <gasps> the retention clip is supposed to go underneath there. First, oh, how am I gonna get that out now? <laughs> oh boy, it's always a fun time, eh? That's not gonna come out now. I, <laughs> this thing's gonna, you know, you could get away without the retention mechanism, really. Why is it so tight? Oh, it's bumping up against wires. Did I push it down too far? It's like the hole's physically smaller now. <gasps> oh, I might have deformed. Yeah, that's just, that's a very fine, uh, that's a very lightweight metal. I'm gonna have to change the name of this uh, video from Watch Me Marry Fans to Watch Me Ruin Fans. Now we have to remount this hole. Wonder what kind of life expectancy we should get from this fan now. Okay, so we have wires apparently stick it out too far. More accurately, a fan that doesn't stick out far enough. Okay. So, uh, want to place bets? Does it still work? Oh, look at that. And the RPM seem roughly correct. And if we apply power to this control box and we plug in the five volt addressable and we trigger the pupper here. Oh, look at that. 
Our addressability is working too, and our fans are in sync. I'm just missing a bearing on one of them, but I, you know, the magnetic pull of the motor is for the most part gonna keep it in place, so I don't really need that bearing. The alternative is to drill out the back end, see if I can get the bearing into place, but I think that ship sailed and I'm not getting that bearing back in there. But as long as our little wire friends here don't rub, we've got a pair of married fans here. Just, yeah. Hilarity ensues. Hilarity quite ensues. You can just pop this off for quick cleaning now. There's little bits of crap stuck in there now. Wash that out. Actually, <laughs> quick, quick removal. Optimized for quick removal. You know, it's gonna be fine. Their speeds aren't so cranking that it's gonna be a problem. Oh, <laughs> remind me to put the clippy in first next time, guys, okay? Now the thing is, that inside diameter bore there has to stay nice and smooth, so the process of trying to get that out is gonna create damage, so yeah. I'm just gonna have to take that one for the team and call it good. Now, I can go install it back into the computer and get that system back online, because this has been a long day. Maybe eventually I'll cut some uh, custom RGB for you. Not in the mood right now though. But yeah, stay tuned guys, because I do all the things.